This video is going to be about how sound is stored on a computer system. Again, this is really strange, but every single sound that you ever hear on a computer that's digital is stored as a one or a zero, a big string of ones and zeros. Okay, so here are the things that you need to know and the things that you need to take away from this video. Firstly, how sound is actually stored on a computer. Second, how all sound is made compatible for computers. Thirdly, the factors that affect the sound quality. And finally, how sound quality and file size are actually calculated. So as previously said, sound is stored on a computer system as a string of bits. Exactly the same as images, or in a similar format. Digital sound is made up of bits and stored in files on your computer system. Analog sound, what you hear on a record player for example, is not compatible to computers. Computers cannot read the data that is on a record. So we need to digitise the sound in some way. Okay, so all sound is basically analog sound that's recorded by a microphone. And the microphone picks up changes in air pressure, which essentially creates it as an analog signal. Now we need to convert this analog signal into digital data, binary strings, so that computers can read and store them. This is done by analog to digital converters. Analog signals are pieces of continually changing data, and you should be able to see from the next few slides what actually happens when we're converting it. So a nice simple flowchart to show the simplified stages of what happens when converting sound from an analog sound into digital data that a computer can read. Basically we start, we input our analog sound, samples of amplitude are taken at specific intervals, those samples are turned into binary data and the output is digital data. Okay, so the first step, this graph shows an analog signal that's been recorded by a microphone and each change in the frequency, as in the height of the graph, is the changes in the air pressure that have been recorded over time. So the line shows the analog sound wave and it's one continuous piece of data that keeps changing. The line has a clear start and an end and it doesn't break at any point. Okay, so to get from analog to digital, we need to do what we call sampling. We're going to sample what the actual amplitude is at different regular intervals. Now you can change how often you want to do this and that will affect the quality of the sound. On this particular diagram, you can see blue dots appearing on the red line quite regularly through the, the stream. So the amplitude can only take certain values depending on the bit rate. Okay, this diagram is the best explanation of analog versus digital. You can see the blue line, which would be the original analog signal. And then you can see lots of red columns uh, sort of going up to meet the blue line, but not quite matching it perfectly. And what this shows is that the data, when it's digital, is not continuous. The blue line is continuous, has a clear start, clear end, and doesn't break at any point. However, the red blocks, there are gaps between them and there are gaps above and just over the line as well. This shows that the quality is not going to be absolutely perfect with this sampling rate. We've only taken nine samples from this analog signal. Now that quality could be increased by sampling more frequently. If I had 25 red columns you might be able to make them really thin and get them right up to the blue line so that it's a lot more closely matched in quality. Okay, so that age-old argument of whether sound is better on a record player or on a CD, and then you've got different sound such as digital theatre surround, you have Dolby Digital, all sorts of different sound qualities, and they can be created by doing certain things when you're actually converting the sound. So for example, there are these factors affecting the size and quality. You've got sampling intervals, sampling frequency, sample size and bit rate. So the sampling interval 
is pretty straightforward. This is how long you leave between taking particular samples of the analog recording. The sampling frequency is how many samples you take per second. The sample size is the number of bits for each sample. And the bit rate is the number of bits per second. So a little bit more about sampling frequency. This is how many samples of the sound are taken each second. So the more samples that are taken, the more detail about where the, rate, the waves, the sound waves rise and fall is recorded and the higher the quality of the audio in the end. So the shape of the sound wave is captured more accurately. If you look at this picture here, you can see the analog signal as the red line and then you can see where the blocks are rising up to meet it. However, there are lots of gaps around the edges. On the next one where the sampling frequency is higher, you can see that the red line is touched almost all the way around by the, ship, by the digital signal. So the unit of measurement for sampling frequency is Hertz. And a really common audio sample rate for music, so any MP3 files that you've downloaded or that you've ripped from CDs that you've purchased is 44,100 samples per second. Okay, so 44,100 samples per second would be 44.1 kilohertz. Voice over internet protocol services, so any sort of service that you use to talk to people using the internet, like Skype for example, that can use a sample rate as low as 8 kilohertz. So that the data can transmit really quickly without losing any data. However, the quality is not always the best. So for every single sample that's taken, which it could be 44,000 times in one second, the bit depth is the number of bits available for each one of those samples. So the higher the bit depth, the higher the quality of the audio. The usual bit depth is 16 bits for a CD and 24 bits on a DVD. Now the bit rate of a file can tell us a lot about an audio file. For example, the bit rate of a file tells us how many bits of data have been processed every second. You can calculate this using the formula. Bit rate is equal to sampling frequency multiplied by bit depth. I've added in number of channels as well because some audio tracks just like CDs and usual music files have got left and right as in two channels. However, DVDs and Blu-rays might have 5.1 or 7.1 channels for the surround sound effects. Bit rates are usually measured in bits per second or kilobits per second. The best way to understand this is probably to pause the video after this point and read over all the stuff that I've just said. So for example, this example calculation will make everything a bit more clear, but you might need to pause it and review what I've said. So bit rate is equal to sampling frequency times sample size times the number of channels. So I've put a little example in the table here. As you can see, we've got two different audio files. Both of them are the same length. Both of them just have the left and right channel. They've both got different sampling frequencies and they've both got the same bit depth. So we can follow through our little formula and calculate what the actual bit rate is going to be. So first file, we've got 32,000 samples per second. So 32 kilohertz is 32,000 hertz. So 32,000 multiplied by the sample size, which is the bit depth, which is 16. And I've put in number of channels as well. So multiply it by two. So we get 1,024,000 bits per second. So if you divide that by a thousand, you get 1,024 kilobits per second. So you follow through the same formula again for the second file. This time it's 44.1 kilohertz, so 44,100 times 16 times two and we get 1,411,200 bits per second, which is 1,411.2 kilobits per second. This might seem 
quite complicated just due to the size of the numbers involved, but you will have a calculator, so you just need to remember the simple formula, sampling frequency times sample size. You probably won't need number of channels for your exam. As we've discussed on a few other videos, file size it can be really, really important with computers because obviously if we're streaming a lot of data and sending files over the internet, we need things to be a bit smaller. So obviously we can compress files, but we want to have them as small as possible anyway. So we need to keep in mind when you're doing audio tracks, how much quality do you really need? How much notice are we going to make between a really, really, really high quality file and one that's just decent quality, but reasonable file size. So the file size will increase if you increase how many times you you take a sample and obviously if you increase the bit rate as well. So the total number of bits is going to increase by the sample frequency and the bit rate. In other words, the better the quality, the bigger the file is going to be. We can calculate file size using file size is equal to bit rate multiplied by the length. So again, the best way of understanding any sort of calculations is to see an example. So using the same two files as before, you can see where I've calculated the bit rate. So if we already know what the bit rate is, or if we need to calculate it first, we can do that. Once we know what the bit rate is, we can easily calculate the file size. File size is equal to the bit rate multiplied by the length of the file. So in this particular case, audio file one is 1024. Uh, kilobit so one oh two four zero 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 multiplied by two four zero is equal to two four five seven six zero 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 bits so we've got our answer in bits there all I'm doing to get it to twenty nine point three megabytes is thinking right how many bits are there in a byte there's eight okay so I'm gonna divide my answer by eight then I'm going to divide it by 1024 and then 1024 again. And now I have it as a megabyte instead. So we can see that our first audio file is 29.3 megabytes. Next one. If we look at file 2 size, we've got 1411200 multiplied by 240 seconds is 3386880000 bits again divide that by 8 divided by 1024 divided by 1024 and we get 40.4 megabytes okay so one of the most useful things i ever learned in physics in school was drawing these little pyramids where you can easily remember formulas and how to calculate certain formulas so I've put the two different calculations that you need to know into a triangle each. And all you need to do is put your finger over the one that you want to calculate. So for example, if I want to know what bit rate is, place my finger over bit rate. And you can see that sample frequency and bit depth are next to each other. So if we multiply across sample frequency multiplied by bit depth is equal to bit rate. Then the other way around, say if I wanted to know what the sample frequency is, put my finger over sample frequency and it's bit rate divided by bit depth is the sample frequency. Same goes for the other side. If I want to know what file size is, I cover up file size and it's the bit rate multiplied by the length in seconds. So you may be asked in the exam, how do you improve the quality of a sound file? So we need to bear in mind these following things. To improve the quality of sound, you need to increase the sample frequency. That means that the analog recording is sampled more often per second. The sample sound will be better quality. It will closely match the original recording. And it means that you might pick up some of the quieter sounds, which means you should have a sampled sound that is closer to the original recording. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please like and subscribe. Bye.